Module 1 introduces us to a four-step process in statistics. The first step, what question do we want to ask? The second step, how are we going to collect the data? Let's actually go and collect the data. Step 3, let's analyze the data that we've collected. And step 4, what conclusions have we reached? Now, the main things that we're going to look at in Module 1 is the collection of data. Now, we have observational studies and we have experiments. In an observational study, we're trying to find something out about the population. Observational studies are never looking at cause and effect. You can never make a conclusion from an observational study that one thing causes another. That is what an experiment is for. An observational study, we're simply asking questions and recording the answers. That's it. We're not manipulating anybody's diet. We're not manipulating what medicine they're taking. We're not manipulating their exercise routine. Nothing. Simply ask questions, record the answers. In an experiment, that is where you manipulate something. You can have two groups, for example, where one group is exercising 15 minutes a day, another group is exercising 30 minutes a day. And you're trying to see if exercise leads to a lowering of blood pressure. Okay, that's cause and effect. Does exercise cause blood pressure to be lowered? That is what you do in an experiment. You manipulate something. We're trying to find out information about the population as a whole. Now, for the population as a whole, it is very hard to question the entire population or to get information about the entire population. If you want to really get information about every single member of the population, that is called a census. A census is where you do not get a subset of the population and question them. You question every member of the population. Or you perform an experiment on every member of the population. But that's almost impossible to do. When you do question every member of the population, that is a census. Now, in our country, we have a census every 10 years. But a census, by definition, can be done at any time. Not just every 10 years. It can be done whenever it is easy to do it. Now, since we normally cannot question everyone in the population, that is where we pick a sample of the population, a subset of the population, so that we can question people that represent the entire population, but it's just a subset. That is what a sample is. Okay, it's also called, what we want is a random sample. A random sample has to be people that are picked at random. Basically, you would want every person to have the same chance of being picked as any other person. Now, you want the sample to look like the population as a whole. So, for example, if we're looking at people, okay, we would want to make sure that the sample looks like the population in terms of gender, in terms of age, in terms of ethnicity, and any other factor that may be important. One thing we do not want in a survey, we do not want the sample to consist of people who pick themselves to be in the sample. For example, we do not want people to take part in an internet-based survey where they come across an internet site and they pick themselves to be part of the survey. That's called voluntary response that does not lead to valid statistical data. Now, if we go back to the subject of experiments, we're trying to see if one variable co 
causes a change in the other variable. So going back to the example of exercise and blood pressure, does the amount of exercise affect a person's blood pressure? Well, exercise in this case is called an explanatory variable. That's the variable that you're going to manipulate. Okay, so for example, if we have an experiment, we can manipulate somebody's diet, we can manipulate their hours of sleep, we can manipulate their exercise level. That's an explanatory variable. Now, the thing that you're trying to see if it's affected, that is called the response variable. So in the case of exercise versus blood pressure, the blood pressure would be the response variable. From the reading material from Statway, we have this example of altering the font of instructions and seeing if the estimated time to complete the task changes. And we saw from the reading material that it did. So in that case, the explanatory variable would be the font. The response variable would be the estimated time to complete the task. Now again, remember, I'm stressing this, that you can only have cause and effect with experiments, not with um, observational studies. One thing you can say from an observational study is that there appears to be an association between two variables. But that's not the same thing as saying that one variable is causing a change in the other. That's left to, that's left to experiments. Another thing, when we have an experiment, we never prove that one variable causes a change in the other. We're simply providing strong evidence that that is happening. But it is never 100% proof that one variable does affect the other. We are simply supplying strong evidence. In an experiment, when we have ex an experiment, you need to have at least two groups. For example, if you have the experiment with the font size to see if that affects the estimate of how long it takes to complete a task, you want the two groups to look alike. So not only do we want a random sample of the population, now, once we get the random sample of the population, we're going to break the sample up into two groups. One group gets the easier to read font, the other one gets the harder to read font. Well, when you break the two groups up, you want the two groups to look alike. You don't want there to be differences between the two groups. The way we accomplish this is through random assignment. So again, the first step is you have to have your random sample. Once you get your sample, you now want to take the sample and break the, these people up into two groups. And you want the two groups to look alike. That is done through random assignment. So basically, you're going to randomly assign people into one of the two groups. That way, you're trying to eliminate differences that could occur between the two groups that could alter, that could affect the outcome. So you want the two groups to look as much alike as possible. Again, in terms of gender, in terms of age, and everything else. Now, another reason we have random assignment is we want to eliminate the possible effect on the outcomes that we observe of something called confounding variables. A confounding variable is something that we have not taken into account. Into account. So, for example, a confounding of variable might be in the case of the fonts versus estimated time. What are the reading abilities of the people? Are some people slower readers or faster readers than others? Maybe that affects their estimate of the time it takes to complete the task. By placing people randomly into groups, 
that hopefully is going to eliminate or, or majorly reduce the effect that a confounding variable could have. Let's say we have an experiment where we're, give, we're testing out a new blood pressure medication and we want to see if that lowers somebody's blood pressure. Now, the fact that somebody is taking the blood pressure medication may lead to a decrease in blood pressure. Just the fact they're taking something may cause them changes in their body that reduces the blood pressure. So what it normally happens in, in an experiment is one group is given the actual medication, a second group is, something, is given something called a placebo. A placebo looks like the actual medicine, it tastes like the actual medicine, but it has no active medication in it. For example, it could be a sugar pill. Now the placebo effect, again, is when somebody is taking, let's say, the placebo. And they don't know it's a placebo, but they're showing that their blood pressure has been lowered just because they, they don't know they have a placebo. They think they're taking the actual medication. So that's called the placebo effect. You're not taking the active medication, but you actually, the placebo group actually does show a, uh, a, a change in their blood pressure. Typically, we have three groups. You have one group that takes the medication. You have the, you have the placebo group. Then you have a control group that doesn't take anything. Now, we have a placebo effect if the blood pressure of the placebo group is close to the blood pressure of the medication group. If the blood pressure of the placebo group is closer to the blood pressure of the control group, again, that's the group that doesn't take any medication, there is no placebo effect. So again, typically we have three groups. You have your medication group, your placebo group, and your control group, which doesn't get anything. In an experiment, we have something called blinding. If we don't want, for example, suppose um, somebody is taking medication. Well, you don't want them to know if they're getting the placebo or the, or the, medi or the actual medicine. So we say that the participant is blinded. So that's single blinding, when only the participant doesn't know what he or she, what group they're in. But you can have single blinding if instead of the participant not knowing what group they're in, the researcher measuring the result doesn't know what group the result came from. Now, double blinding is the best if you can do it. If you can have the participant not know what group he or she is in, and if you can have the researcher not know what group the data came from, that's double blinding. Now, sometimes it's impossible to do. If you're going to have two groups of um, participants and one group exercises for 15 minutes a day, another group exercises for 30 minutes a day, it is impossible to blind the participants. They know what group they're participating in. And finally, when we're doing um, observational studies or experiments, we're going to be finding out that you want your sample size to be as large as possible. The larger the sample size, the better your results. However, population size doesn't matter. Okay, if you, if you can get a thousand participants in a study, it doesn't matter if your population size is 1 million or 5 million. Okay. Sample size does matter, but population size does not matter.